Friend of God family, it's time for Church at Home and we want to welcome you. If you are watching this this morning, you are either joining us for our 8 a.m. service or our 10 a.m. service. We want to remind you that under lockdown level 1 regulations, we as church are permitted to gather under one roof in groups of 250 people. If you feel comfortable joining us online, please continue to do so. But if you want to possibly take that next step, we want to encourage you to book your seat for next week to join us in person. There really is nothing like coming together with fellow believers to worship the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, I want to ask you to really open your heart and really be expectant for God to do something miraculous in your life. As church, we really want to cover you in prayer and we want to remind you that if you are facing anything in your journey at this moment and you really need someone to come alongside you to pray with you, we want to encourage you to send us your prayer requests by making use of the WhatsApp number provided at the bottom of the screen. We want to pray with you. We want to strengthen you in prayer. And we want to remind you this morning that we truly are better together. As we head over to the worship team family, I want to encourage you to really lean into this moment. Be expectant because we know that God is working in this place. I raise the You're gonna hear my 
Hello friends of God from around the world. It's incredible to be with you again on this Sunday and thank you for choosing the Friend of God platform. I'm so excited as we continue to speak about kingdom values and today I'm wanting to speak about being submissive. We're going to be addressing some things and so just before we do that, let's quickly pray and trust God that this word will transform our journeys. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to speak about this. Being submissive in the kingdom, I'm asking God, reveal your truth to us so that we might serve you in a greater capacity. Amen and amen. Praise God. Friends of God, I want to start off with the scripture, James 4, 7 to 10. Many of you might know the scripture, but it's something that really, really, really is important to understand that if you're going to be operating in the kingdom, this is one of those values that you need to get right. And the Bible says this in verse 7. He says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. You see, friends, I want you to know something. The key is submitting yourself to God not God bringing you to submission. That's not where the reward is. Submitting yourself to God. Then he goes on to say this, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now friends, if you read that together, it was simply saying this, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You see friends, sometimes we struggle with resisting the enemy or the work of the enemy on our journey, not because the enemy has got power, but because we have not brought ourselves to a place of submitting ourselves to God. And the first thing I want to take a hold of here in this kingdom value teaching is that we have a responsibility to submit ourselves to God, and in that, the enemy will flee from us. He goes on to say this, draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wrenched and mourn and weep. Let laughter be turning to mourning and your joy to gloom. Now notice these words, verse 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord. Again, the action of humbleness, the action is our responsibility before the Lord and then the promise and He will exalt you. And so we have two things that are crucial here. Number one, if we will submit ourselves to God, the enemy will flee from us. Number two, if we humble ourselves before the Lord, He will exalt us. You see, friends, when we submit ourselves to God, when we humbly come and introduce our weaknesses to God and submit ourselves, we activate the power of God that causes the enemy to flee and we activate the promise of God that exalts our journey. I love what it says in Hebrews 12 verse 19. He says, since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, and many of us know about that, shouldn't we submit ourselves even more to the discipline of the Father, of our spirits, and live forever? Job 22, 21 says these words, submit to God and you will have peace. Then things will go well for you. In these first three scriptures, what are we seeing over here? When we bring an action to be submissive, when we humble ourselves, when we submit ourselves to God, when we present ourselves to Him, we come before He comes to us. God is the God that is able to work a great work for us and bring us to a place of peace and in our peace cause us to enjoy goodness and kindness and well-being. I want to give us some examples right now, and uh, I want to start off by speaking about a man by the name of Joseph. Now, for those of you that are joining us for the very first time, or for those of you that are new in the faith, uh, Joseph is an incredible individual, and um, before I tell you a little bit more about him, I want to remind you that there was King Herod that had given instructions to kill all the baby boys, and God's about to confront him with a very difficult situation, but he needs to be protecting a precious little boy, a boy by the name of Jesus. Matthew 2, verse 13 to 15 says this, Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child 
to destroy him. And he rose up and he took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill, notice these words, this was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. Incredible, you think about this, the complexity that Joseph had to put himself through. Here he wakes up the mother, and you can just imagine, this mother's now got this baby little boy, and he says to listen yeah, I don't know how to break the news to you, but we're going. God spoke to me in a dream, and I'm going to submit myself to that. Even though it's moving me away from my own comfort, even though it's moving me away from my own family, even though it's moving me away from my own income, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to submit myself to the instruction of the Lord. And more than that, the Bible says that he stayed true to the instruction of God all the way until Herod had passed away. His submission, his faithfulness to the instruction of God is the reason why we have Jesus as a Savior. I want to give you another example of someone by the name of Peter. And Peter does something interesting in Acts 5, verse 17 to 32. And I know it's a ton of scripture, but just go with me for a moment. The Bible says, but the high priest rose up and all who were with him, that is the party of the Sadducees, and they filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them into public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and they began to teach. Now watch this. If you've been put into prison and the angel of the Lord comes and he breaks you free from that prison, the very first thing you probably want to do is just disappear. But even in their freedom, they choose not to um, take their freedom for, for their own liberty, but they choose to submit themselves to the instruction of the Lord. And they go back to doing what was the very reason why they got caught up. Now when the high priest came in, those who were with them, they called together the council, all the senate of the people of Israel, sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they found them not in prison, so they were returned and reported. We found the prison security locked and the guard standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one on the inside. Now when the captain of the temple, the chief priests heard these, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and they're teaching the people. I want you to see again, these gentlemen had an opportunity to disappear, but they chose to obey. Then something happens, and I, and I, and I love this. Then the captain with the office went and they brought them, but not by force. You could see the captains were, were real careful about this, for they were afraid to be stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in his name, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, notice these next words, We must obey God rather than than men. You see, friends, Peter realizes that there's a situation. His life could be in danger, but he's rather going to submit himself to the instruction of God. He's going to risk his own life knowing that if he submits himself to God, God is the God that can sustain him. I want to close off with a scripture today. Luke twenty-two forty-two. I want to say something about this, and if you'll hear me the Bible says this in verse 42, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. This is Jesus speaking. But he says these words, yet not my will, but yours be done. Friends of God, wherever you are in the world, I wonder when last you prayed that kind of prayer. Father, take this cup from me, but not my will be done but rather yours. Friends, Jesus is incredible. And when you think how he submits himself to the will of God, knowing that the will of God 
will take him further than his own will. I genuinely want to plead with you, wherever you are across the world, won't you embrace the words of Jesus Christ? Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Friends of God, we love you. We're praying for you. And if you'd like to receive Jesus Christ, or if you need prayer or any other ministry, I'm asking you, engage with us. We want to journey with you. Nothing but love, family. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silence the bows of sin and rain. The heavens are up.